Hello! Welcome back! I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. Welcome to another episode. Showed up here nice and early. Told you I was going to get on another video. This here is a Mantua set that I want to showcase here. Mantua, well that's Tyco, right? Well, no, there's, there's, a, little, there's a little difference here. This is one of the re-released sets from Mantua. John Tyler helped form the original Mantua Metal Products Toy Train Company in 1926 and started selling, you know, metal trains under the Mantua name by 1930. The shift towards the ready to run, all the stuff back in the old days was a kit. You had to put it together. You had to take some time. But they shifted to ready to run stuff. And by 1952, Mantua started up a division called the Tyler Manufacturing Company, also referred to as Tyco. Tyco did the ready to run stuff. Mantua, they still kicked around, but they were mostly kit stuff back in the day. John Tyler's son, Norman, was named president in the mid-60s and combined the Mantua and the Tyco brands together under, you know, one, one name. And then, of course, you know, in 1970, because model trains were dying off, you know, I, uh, video games, electronics, I don't know. But they ended up selling, you know, they, they sold their company to Consolidated Foods. Consolidated Foods had it. They cheapened up the manufacturing process, took the manufacturing offshore, and then we had the brown box era that went from 70 to 1993. Now, in 1977, uh, John Tyler, Norman Tyler, I can't figure out which one of them. Well, they, they, were, they were mad because, you know, what happened to their train lines. They reintroduced the Mantua name. They even went back and, and, and leased the original facility that they were building these things in. Hired a bunch of new guys on, and they started re-releasing all of the Tyco available stuff under the Mantua name. But here's the kicker. They were engineered like 10 times better. They were really nice. Were, are, still are. They're still out there. They're still kicking around. The Mantua, the Mantua Heavies. Except for now, they are sold under the Model Power name, which is owned by Model Rectifier Corporation, MRC. You know, those guys who make Transformers. So, yeah, this is Tyco, but it's not Tyco. It's the Mantua stuff from the old days well, follow along with me. We'll show you. This this thing is amazing. It is, it's engineered really nice. You need to add some new release Mantua to your collection. This is one of them vintage store finds. Probably paid way too much money for it. But let's get into it. Let's see what we got. Well, getting into the set here, down here at the very bottom, it says it was made in 1993. I don't follow football at all, so I'm not really all that in love with this set, other than the fact that it's in really good shape, and it's uh, it's Mantua stuff. They've got a really groovy F7 in here. Oh my god, this is like stuff that would break things. Why, god, does it have to... Holy... This is just unnatural. Why would they do that? I guess it's I guess it's just made to look at. Oh, can't believe I didn't break anything. It's got it's got eight wheel drive on it. That's that's a quite a change from what they used to used to do. These refrigerated box cars, they they are nice looking they are let me let me throw them up on the turntable here so you can you can really get your peepers put on them because they, they did a nice job on the ink printing on these or pad printing or or whatever they did wow these are nice looking cars
wonder if we can get in here. I wonder if it's as easy to get into as a as an Atherton blue box. So far, no. Mostly because I cut off all my thumbnails. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Oh, we got something going on here. Holy. Well, here the thing's got a windshield in it. It's got a headlight. Unilluminated number boards. I probably I probably broke this. Just trying to get it out of the stupid packaging. Right there. Glue that. At least the horns aren't yellow anymore. Yeah. But look at that. Yeah. It's got a little can motor in it. Pick up here, pick up over here. Little tiny headlight. Oh, nickel plated wheels. That's fantastic. I wish they could have done this, uh, you know, a really long time ago. I wonder if it runs. We should throw it on the track and find out. I, oh, I, I gotta say, I, I kind of thought it would run better. That thing's been kind of a pill this whole time. Oh, sure. Huh. Well, its performance on the track left left a little to be desired. It it needs some lubrication, needs a little bit of cleaning, needs a new piece of scotch tape because this one's not sticking anymore. So simple, simple little layout in here. I can see these clips right here. Hold the trucks in, give it a little pry. Oh, that come out. Oh, sure. Little, little tiny dog bone there. Here is our, our gearbox. I can see some wipers down inside there that are picking up from the backside of these wheels. Wheels are gonna come off. You can see this clip sitting right here. Yup, and there is hardened up grease in there, man. That means I gotta clean all these out too. There's a tit here and a tit here. I pushed it in and we got the upper part of the tower to come apart. There must be another one down in this area here. And that is what she looks like. Another gear here. Sits in here like this. And then this larger bull gear was sitting in like that. And then this guy was sitting up at the top like this. And then here's our housing with the old crabby grease in it. So you know what the crabby grease means? Time to pull out the Q-tips, the mineral spirits, and wipe all this stuff down and get all this cleaned up so we can Regrease it with some new fresh grease. These things have got hardened grease everywhere. Everywhere on them. I'm surprised it actually ran. So I spent some time with my odorless mineral spirits here and Q tips. It cleaned up all the old grease off of all the gears inside the gear tower. Cleaned it all out in the air. Wiped it down real good. This helical gear. This one's been unadulterated because it still has its thrust washers. So that means nobody's taken it apart and cleaned it and lost the thrust washers. Plus, I'm also happy that it's engineered with thrust washers in there. Thrust washers always make me happy. Here's the wipes that go on the back of the wheels. So I used this and I shined them up, but these are, these are brass and they're going to corrode again because that's what brass does when we're not looking. This stuff here, I've been testing it. Put a little bit in there and use a Q-tip and apply this to the brass contacts once they're clean. This is supposed to leave a fun little residue behind and it's supposed to keep them from corroding once again. So I'm going to try this out. They weren't bad before. The back of these wheels, this has got four wheel pickup, four wheel drive. The back of the wheels being nickel, nickel plated, they're not going to corrode 
but we'll just we'll just go the extra mile on them anyway. Of course, keeping it off the drive surfaces because it, it might be slippery. Multi-purpose synthetic grease, and we are going to re-grease up all these gears. Of course, you can get this block off, and you can grease this up fine. But the other block you can't because it's got the drive line attachment on it right under here. And try to get some in on this thrust washer behind it. Get just a little grease down in there. We'll probably have to end up oiling that one when it's all said and done. So this feller sat in there like this. Now there's a thick side, and there's a thin side to these gears. I think we took this guy out last, so we'll put him in first. We're trying to get a little grease on these bushing, this area right here. Mm, yeah, yep, that looks, that looks better. Get all these portions here, lubed. And then of course, try to get some grease on these gears. Make sure all these little bearing blocks right here where the shafts ride have a little grease on them. Get this tower pushed back together. Now we can put a little lick on these gears here. Rotate this input shaft. Another little lick. A little bit in there where the axles ride. Capture these contacts, these pickups. I like to start the center and roll these back. And that'll keep the, the pickups contained till you can get the dang wheels in there. They've got an interesting way that this coupler lines up. It sits in here. What's gonna end up happening is this tab has gotta be fed through on this side. Then you gotta get your coupler and put it in there on the pin. Hold all this together. Snap the truck back together. Coupler's functioning. Oh yeah, see? Lots, lots going on there. Check the tower. Yes, it is doing what it's supposed to do. Put our little cutesy drive line in. But you wouldn't want to break that little nimble thing. Look at that tininess. Gosh. Amazing that even transfers torque. Bring this guy in up from the bottom. Get your drive line in the coupling. Oh, yeah. There's, there's what it looks like right there. Clip the clip back on. And that truck has been serviced. Do the same thing over on this one. We ready to move on to the next step. Took this front, this front one apart. Here's a really good example of that, just that really old grease in there that dries up and looks like, like earwax. You can see it all, all over the place in there. So this thing, I don't think it's ever really been ran. The, the packaging looks perfect. Everything looks really nice. I think it was just bought and it was just stored. And this is what ends up happening to something that just, I mean, it's brand new, but you know, this is why you gotta learn how to do all this maintenance on these things. Keep them, keep them to store so they'll store for another 30 years. Pushing 30 years, holy moly. So, yep, take all this out, scrub it all down, grease it up, reassemble it. Mm -hmm. The happiness just never stops. Now that we got both the trucks disassembled, cleaned out, re-lubed, reinstalled, we're going to give this motor just a little taste, one at each end. It's a little bit less than too much. You don't want to over oil these. So the oil will get in there and contaminate that armature. Then we've got these U joints here. We'll just we'll just give them these drive lines. Give it just a little taste. Remember how noisy it was when it was on the track before? I'm guessing it's going to be a lot better. Let's go try it out and see. Oh yeah, that's that's a lot quieter. Holy moly, kind of a creep speed. We're at 2.5 volts right there. Oh, oh, that's a good creep. Holy moly. And it ain't hardly draw, it doesn't draw any amps at all. 2.5, she is still moving. I don't even know, that's even less than a quarter amp. I, it, it just, I mean, that's off. Gosh, that is a nice, nice creep. Oh, two, 
2.5 is about all it can do. It doesn't want to do anything less than that. Still, that's impressive. We should put the whole, the whole consist together and see what she looks like. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mother. F well, apparently, when you pick up the uh, the car, the frame falls right out the bottom. All right, right out the bottom. I didn't even have enough time to grab it. And it hit the floor and broke both of those off. That's, that's great. That's just wonderful. Design stuff like that. Hey, look at that. That body just falls right out of there. It is not locked on whatsoever. Ah, you rotten. Broke off one of the steps trying to get it out of that packaging. I noticed that the cars, they're heavy. They got weight to them, unlike a normal Tyco. So I decided I was going to take a measurement and see. Four point, it's actually a little heavy. This is coming in at 4.3 ounces. And according to NMRA standards, the length of this car, it only needs to be 3.75 ounces. So it is half an ounce overweight, which is fine. You know, better than underweight. What do you think this loco weighs? What do you think? A pound? A pound and a quarter. Well, let's find out here. One pound, six ounces. Yeah, that's a heavy loco. The bottom of these things here, Super Bowl Express, certified 1993. It's got a Mantua uh, placard right down there. And unfortunately made in China. Dang it. I was kind of hoping Mantua was building stuff in America. They got metal coupling pockets held on with little tiny Phillips screws, which will make these super easy to convert over to KD if one was so inclined. Now, I don't know who was in the Super Bowl because this is supposed to be a Super Bowl set. I don't know these teams. I don't know anything about these. So if I think a while back somebody said that one team wasn't in the Super Bowl. Okay. <laughs> it's... It's news, news to me. Well, this one was really pretty straightforward. You know, it ran, it ran, for, it, it ran. We just had to make it run better, give it a little maintenance. It needed that after 30 years. Spent a couple days trying to find cool music, rock music. 80s actually is my favorite rock music, 80s. You get the hair. So <laughs> let's watch it run around the track here just a little bit. See if it looks good. That, that came out pretty nice, yeah. Uh, I don't have any plans for this thing. Maybe I'll just put it on eBay. I don't, because I just, what do you do? I mean, it's a complete collector set. Uh, you, uh, you know, not, not, you know what I mean. It doesn't look right on a, on a prototypical railroad with, with football names on it. So just, it's a wall princess is what it is. Here over the last week, I have went over 2,000 subscribers. Super excited about that. Thank you guys so much. We had a thousand subscribers. It happened at the end of July. 
Now, uh, in about the middle of November, I got to 2,000. Coming up on my one year anniversary. My first video was posted December 12th. So we're getting really close to that. I've had phenomenal success with all you people that have been supporting the channel. I couldn't be more happier. Everybody that throws in comments and thumbs up and stuff. And this is, this is great. This is, this is better than I could have ever hoped for. Uh, I get a visit with other guys uh, around the country and even around the world. This is just the best. So thank you. Thank you guys so much for all of your continued support. I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.